so my first race car, I called my brother Mark. Mark, you want to do the racing? I'll do the work and build the cars that you want to drive. We ran Columbus on Friday night, Jefferson on Saturday nights. If there's a Tuesday race, we'd make it. Specials, we'd make them. We did car shows, parades. We were very busy. Then we got Pepsi involved and we won a lot of races, we had a lot of fun. I think our best win ever was Lake Geneva before they closed down. Mark started dead last. Passed everybody we raced against every week that kicked our butts around here and Mark tore him up. I couldn't even watch the race. I had to turn around. I couldn't watch it. I thought something my built was going to break. My name is Charles Johnson. I grew up here in this town of Arena. Went to school here, worked here. Pretty much lived here all my life. When I was 19, I started losing my eyesight. It took all the way till I was 39 to totally lose it. I felt so worthless. I had went through severe depression. I didn't want to work on cars no more. I didn't want to race. I didn't want kind of nothing to do with anybody for a while until I learned that I can live with this. I just have to do it a different way. I guess I took blindness as don't take nothing for granted. The good thing about losing your eyesight, the way I did, it was slowly, so I could progress my skills without using all my eyesight. And I think it helped me adjust to losing it all. It just took forever to seem like for me to get motivated again. My brother Wayne moved in with me. He was helping work on cars and kind of took over for a little bit there. And I'm like, you know, I, don't, I can sit here and do nothing or I can make this happen. So that's kind of where it got back into working on cars again. I got this C10 and I, I knew I could make it better. Of course, not knowing what it looked like, but it really helped me to figure out what I want to do with my life. There's people worse off than I am. People got bigger problems than I do. I can make my life better. I'm not stuck. My attitude is I want to keep working. I still do landscaping. People are like, how do you do landscaping? I said, I've been doing it all my life. I said, I just walk the grade and tell them what I want and what I don't like, and they'll change it. I worked for a guy for a month. He didn't even know I was blind. He didn't have a clue, and I didn't want to tell him. And uh, he did, never questioned me. He's seen my work, and he says, just keep working. He says, it looks great. I still do a lot of work as far as driveways and cement. I pour cement yet. I play basketball, but I ain't very good at it, but I try. You gotta just try stuff, even if it don't work out all the time. Don't give up on life because you got a disability. You gotta surround yourself with people that wanna help and they wanna learn from you and just go with the flow. This is my son's first year in racing. I mean, he's never raced go-karts, nothing like that. For what he's learned in a year, it's unbelievable. He's really come a long way. He's getting better at dissecting the corner, telling what the truck needs, and that's the biggest part of making them work. You gotta know what it does. I can't see the truck on the tracks no more. I have to do it all by what people tell me. All I'm looking for this year is laps. He just needs laps. The first year of racing for me, learning has been difficult at times. You have to understand that you're not going to learn it in one night. 
even though my dad is blind, I don't see him that way. He, he can do everything that you can do. And that really helps with my confidence in him and what he's telling the crew guys. I trust his experience, and so I know he's doing the right thing for me. It really means the world to me because it kind of brought us closer together. There ain't nothing I can't do on this truck. I put a stub on it already. I pulled the motor out, put it back in. I changed all the suspension. I do the brakes. I tinker with this truck every week, trying to make it better. I made a tool up that we can do ride heights because I can't read a tape measure. It's a piece that goes under the frame and it slides up and bangs in the frame and I tighten it. And then I just hand it to Tyler in the truck and he measures it and tells me what it is, and, and that's how I do my ride heights. And There's just different ways of doing stuff, even though you can't see. I gotta use feel and touch. I have to touch it. I can just listen to the motor and smell the exhaust and tell you if it's, if it's where it should be. I listen to people's tone of their voice, and I can, I can tell if they're stressed. I can just sense that they're on the edge. If he gets on the radio and says, Dad, it's loose. I know how loose it is. And he's like, Dad, it's a little loose. So you may fix it a little bit, you know, and then it's not so bad. I feel more comfortable at the track than even at work, anywhere, because I know the environment. I know what's going on all the time. I'm the coach. I get a lot of inspiration from my girlfriend, Sue, Tyler's mom. She's a cancer survivor. That's worse than anything I've had to deal with. I met Sue when I was 18. She's always wanted to take care of people, and we started foster care through this county, and we wanted to make the kids' life better. And whatever it took, we brought kids here that couldn't even talk. And uh, I worked on this fella for three months to get him to count to 10. And Having so many kids through my house, just felt like we made a difference. You know, like they got to go back home and they're a better person. That makes you feel good is when they get to go home and there's a big smile on their face, like, hey, it's gonna work out. And uh, we always say, just call. If you have issues, just get a hold of us. We'll, we'll help you any way we can. If you wanna take care of people, no matter what kind of physical shape you're in, you can do it. Another rookie of the season in the Johnson Trophy to appear. Lee Trucky. How about a nice man for Tyler Noble? It's like I've matured a lot since I've even gotten the truck. Patients have grown. Winning my first heat race, it was exhilarating. It was the greatest feeling I've ever had. I just want to thank the Midwest Truck Series for giving me opportunity to start my career somewhere. I love it because it's very competitive, it's balanced, you can't get outmotored, and it's a fair series to start out. I think the relationship between me and Tyler since racing, we both got competitive edges. I want to see him perform good, but be respectful and be committed. This is a lifestyle. This is not a job. This is not a hobby. This is a lifestyle. One of the biggest things I tell him is be smooth. 
get your rhythm and don't force the truck to do what you don't want to do. If you're jumpy on the gas, or jumpy on the brakes, all you do is upset the truck and you can't tell if it's loose in, tight off. It just got to be smooth. The improvements he's made is unbelievable for some of a true rookie. And he's got to get the respect from the drivers that he's going to not wreck them. It's all trust. If you don't trust the truck, don't get in it. He's got to trust me that I didn't put it way out there where he can't reel it in. And I got to trust him that he's not going to tear it up and get hurt. That's the biggest thing. My dad used to say, you can watch a train go by or you can get on and be somebody. If you can make your life better, do what you can with it. Don't ever stop because you, you don't think you can do it. You can do it.